What do you get when you have two microphones, a bottle of bourbon, and plenty of time to kill? It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast with Billy and Jimmy. Glad you found us. Sit back, relax. Let's see what we get into. It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast, episode 48, take two. We're back. Jimmy, how goes you today, my friend? (laughs) <laughs> better than you <laughs> we're on take two here uh so we kind of got through all the intros and everything on the, the first start and my wonderful english bulldog decided to put his head on the surge protector and killed power to everything again so we're on take two so again we gotta remember what we said the first time and try to re- you know start over so with that billy what are we drinking today I'm halfway through this bottle of Blue Run Kentucky Straight Bourbon. We've had this sitting on the shelf behind us. You can't see us out over here, out of the camera. Anyway, so I I knew we have had it before, but we haven't had it on the podcast. So we haven't rated uh, it. <clears throat> yep. So today's its first day on it's the Bourbon Talk podcast. We're gonna have a glass during the podcast, and we're gonna rate it. Stick around to the end, and we'll tell you if we like it or not. And uh, if you should go out and try to find a bottle and enjoy it yourself. And I'm drinking out of another Christmas gift I got from John. And he had it engraved, Jimmy, it's the bourbon talking on on the glass. It holds a cigar. Billy got one, too, with Billy's name on it. But he decides that it looks better in his cabinet at home than on the podcast. So Sorry, John, I forgot to bring it over. I've been drinking bourbon out of it at the house. So, anyways, we're on... Take two, you know, I, I got this memorized. I think I'm, so we're going to do a take three? Uh, hopefully not, no. <laughs> let's get it right this. We're this, trying to get it right. Let's get it right the second time. The, and I think the last time the dog <laughs> did the same thing to us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he's, he's, a, he's a good dog. He just laid his head in the wrong well, spot. Well, he's a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so, we'll, nah, he's a good boy. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, we're going to try this bourbon out today. Mm-hmm. And I and I get what you're saying. They need to file off one of the corners there to kind of. Yeah, that it's, up. it's yeah. a good clay. I like. I, I like that. It. Nice, nice thick. and thick. Yeah, yeah it's got good. A, if you're not smoking a cigar, it's got a finger hole. It's not going to slip out of your hand. No, no, it's uh, it's, it's good. I like it. What is it we want to talk about today? What is, you know, I got I, I got one I want to start with, and Billy's over there trying to keep the dog from going toward the power. Uh, <laughs> like I'll start it out. So, uh, you know, this week was. The, and, and again, this says really no party affiliation, but you know the they had the Iowa caucus this week, and a couple of the uh, the, the news networks decided that they're in, in, in Trump won a landslide in the GOP caucus there. I mean, he got over fifty percent, and the news networks decided that they're not going to show Trump talking. They decided they refused to air his comments. I've never seen a news organization do that before until I started watching news straight out of North Korea. That is exactly the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, that they yeah, do. I mean, so I state mean, run media operates well, that I way. Mean, We're going to, we'll listen to it and we'll, we'll tell you what, what you should hear out of his remarks. We don't want to. So just, CNN is now the, the communist news network. CNN was one of the, the networks. I mean, show everybody. Don't just show, you pick and choose. So they're censoring you know, politicians, they're censoring what we watch now. I mean, that is communist news network. And then the other, the other one, MSNBC, the, the Moscow socialist network broadcast company state run is doing the same thing, censoring what people are saying, politicians. I mean, when has this country got to that low of a point that you have to censor And And I'll be honest with you. If those two networks were going to censor somebody, Shouldn't they be censoring our current president, Joe Biden, because he cannot string two sentences together in a coherent manner? I mean, I wouldn't want to televise any of that, but we, you know, again, they should show it. But that's just me. I mean, it's I think we've gotten to a low point when the news will not cover a past president or a candidate running for president's comments. I don't know. I I want to see both sides, you know, and the moment I don't watch CNN, 
but if I did, I don't care what political party I'm in, if they're not giving me the information that I I, I wouldn't give them my my viewership no, anymore. Uh, well, and that's kind of why I, I quit watching CNN years ago is they became political on what they're airing and just started, you know, bashing the candidates. And that's the right. reason I quit going to them. But again, I mean, we, again, I want to see both sides like you. I want to see both sides speaking. Right. So I can make a, an informed again, I, I'm decision not on who you, I want to yeah. well, vote for. I'm not going to tell you who to do and what to watch and all this, but mm. y- you are being fed exactly what they want you to hear. When they start censoring, they, and they literally said, so, we're not going to air the former president's comments. When they start censoring like that, that is a new low point in this country. And right. I'm, uh, people ought to rise up. I mean, even don't matter what network it is. Whether it's the left, right, center, yeah, I don't I, care. I really don't. I don't get my news from anything that comes out of the big black box on the TV or hanging on the wall. I, that's not where I get my news from. Um, so people still call that mainstream media. That's not. It's not mainstream anymore. When when you're no, state run media. Yeah. When 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 your Nelson ratings are not even a million people watching you. You're, how, how how are you the the Leader in news. I mean, yeah. why not have a state run? I mean, that's all it is. If they're going to censor mm-hmm. and only show certain things, that's, I mean, that, that's Again, low for that's, our country. That's that is North, low. It's what North Korea does. You know, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Rachel Maddow. How are you doing today, Rachel? <laughs> Jesus. What up? Yeah, you're one of those state run employees, aren't work, you? Man. Communists. No, show it all. Don't don't pick and choose. That's crazy. You know, when did they become the, uh, the 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 judge in what we should watch? I mean, seriously, mm. that's crazy. Rachel Maddow should be fired, and anybody on the other side too. I mean, they're gonna censor uh, what candidates are saying and former presidents, and you should be fired too. I don't care if you're on the left or right. I really don't. I want to hear all of it. I don't want to hear bits and pieces of what they want me to hear. I want to hear all of it in the entirety. So we usually try to prepare. No, we don't. We don't prepare anything for these podcasts, just to let you know. We always come in here and wing it. But if we're going to talk about something, we usually look at, I just had this pop up. Joe Biden got caught on a hot mic saying that he is going to take care of Texas with F-15s. Hmm. Got to got to look into that. Hang on. Not happening. He's still <laughs> bent because the state of Texas kicked the federal government out of uh, Eagle Pass. Oh, I know. That's what he's talking about. I just. If we have to send F-15s to Texas here and raise war against Texas, if we should be it. We're going to make sure those cowboys don't stop the surge of military-aged men from entering. If we have to send wow. F-15s to Texas here and raise war against Texas, it should be it. Well, that's, that's a little crazy. I mean, really, there people. That's how you start a civil war. Goodness gracious, there, Joe. Be sure. Uh, wow, we're just gonna bomb the carpet, bomb the crap out of Texas. Really, Joe? Really? Wow. Now, where is that on the uh, communist news network or the Moscow socialist uh, network? That's. Uh, I gotta kill. Go. Little capture on this, so you know. that's crazy. That We're gonna carpet bomb Texas. Unbelievable. Well, why does my audio keep falling out? I don't know, man. Okay, we rearranged this thing to your specs. We had tape measures out, survey sticks, and everything else. I don't understand what's going on. Survey says my audio keeps falling out. All right, I think I got it now. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, uh, again, it comes back to, really, we want to carpet Gee, bomb Joe. Texas. Wow. And guess what, Joe? F-15's a great fighter jet, but we've got newer stuff in the arsenal. You stuck in 1983 old. <laughs> no offense to the F-15 pilots out there. F-15's a badass, but we, if you're going to send some shit to Texas, send the new stuff. 
Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking he's kind of got uh, <laughs> like Snoopy on a doghouse flying over, going after the Red Baron with his bi wing, you know, thing. It's like, dude, you, you're so far behind times. I mean, he thinks that's the most modern. Yeah. Send that new fame dangled F 15 down there. Wow. Okay. So we're, Joe. yeah, I mean, good grief. I mean, I assume after Texas, Florida's next. Please. Right. Yeah. Please. No, I don't want a civil war. This is crazy, but this is how civil wars start. You, hot Mike, you're talking about sending F-15s Teach to Teach them Texas. cowboys a lesson. Teach the cowboys a lesson. Are you kidding me? Wow. I wonder how Jean-Pierre <laughs> is going to sidestep that statement. Yeah. That <laughs> one, are you kidding me? I can see her sitting at, ho- at home in her ottoman with her feet kicked up. Hearing this going, no, oh, shit. Let me start writing some lies. Yeah. Can I get, a, can, I get that my was, crack, can I get my crack pipe? That was actually head. not Joe Biden. <clears throat> that was one of them new AI deep fakes is what she's going to say. Oh. No, and that again, was Joe but, Biden. But we, but we heard it. So, <laughs> again, hear the good, bad, and the ugly. I, I want to hear it. You know, and I can make my own, you know, informed decision. And, again... I don't like that, but I want to hear it, you know. And you might not like what Donald Trump says, but you know what? I People want to hear it. The whole This whole politics thing has just really gone off the deep end. I mean, with Trump, Joe Biden, I mean, Hunter Biden, I mean, affecting Joe Biden's, you know, run. But, I mean, he just was in California for, you know, one of his hearings. You know, again, apparently the judge read the book that he wrote – showing he had a gun and cocaine all in the same room. <laughs> and it's yep. like, dude, you're incriminating yourself. Whoopsie. And you're and, and you tried to blame Trump. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Trump's fault. That's, that's yeah. Trump's fault. It's like really yeah. wait a minute, what? <laughs> you wrote about it. <laughs> he drove me. Yeah. Uh, it's like good grief. I mean and then you got on the other side, you got Trump and all his, you know, stuff going on with all the indictments and hearings and stuff. I mean and then you got Joe Menendez, who, you know, took all the Egyptian gold and yeah, it's like, really, you're, you're, they're all, cr- how do, how do we just start over clean sweep? I mean, it, it almost has to be a civil war to start over and get all these politicians out of office and start from the ground level again. I mean, how, how do I don't, I mean, somebody give me another idea. I mean, how do how do you wash away all these politicians out of D.C. today and start over. It's crazy that that's even being discussed. You know, Tim Pool on the <clears throat> Tim Pool podcast, <clears throat> he's been talking about, you know, uh, that's one more step closer to the Civil War. You know, he's been talking about for probably two years that I know of, probably even longer. And when he first, you know, was talking about it, I was like, oh, that's, that's crazy talk. We'll, we'll never get there. That's crazy talk, you know. The more the, every day, it's getting it appears to be getting closer and closer. Oh, I, just, I agree. And then something a little more crazier comes out, and it's like, how are we not already in a civil war? I really don't get it. It's yeah. I mean, but we're not the only you know government out of control. I mean, let's look at the royal family for crying out loud. You know, I mean, they they put oh. Uh, Prince Andrew in an ice box over there, like, dude, just shut up and don't come out, you know? We got Iran shooting rockets at Pakistan. Pakistan returning fire. And, um... Oh, yeah, you got Israel. I mean, they're going after Hamas and all the guys in Gaza Strip. I mean, and Hamas is actually the Palestinian government, you know? So they won the election. So, yeah, I mean, it's just all these politicians and governments are just out of control. I mean, hey, let's just go and look at uh, Russia. I mean, Putin, I mean, for crying out loud. Hey, I need to expand our footprint, so we're going to go into Ukraine. And- Ukraine's, they've lost so many military-aged males that the average age of their military is 48 right now. And so they're telling neighboring countries to extradite back the cowards that have left Ukraine so that they can send them back into battle, you know, because they're absolutely the loss of life over there is nuts. Yeah, you know? it's, it's out of control. 
I hate to even comment or talk about it because I realize there's such a psyop going on with that issue. There's no way that we're getting true numbers. You know, one day Russia's winning, the next day Ukraine is slaughtering Russia. We have no clue. I have no idea. When's the last time you've been to Ukraine? I haven't been there. I have no idea what's going well, on. I was over close there. to it last March, but yeah, yeah but, I went over. But, but it's, we have no, again, anything that comes out of that black box hanging on the wall, I usually try to think, oh, what's the opposite of that? That's probably what's actually true. Well, well so, and the same thing with Israel and, you know, the Palestinian there. It's, you don't really know what's truly going on there. I mean, no. Everybody's raising Cain, you know, saying Israel needs to stop, you know, Palestinian needs to have its own side. But again, look, nobody needs to die, but I, I got to say that the Palestinians actually went into Gaza and kidnapped and killed a bunch of Israels. Hamas did. Or Hamas, but Hamas is the, govern, the government in Palestine. They, they won the government control. So they're, mm-hmm. that's part of the, the Palestinians. So yeah, again... I- the, the blame of the Palestinian it, it falls on Palestine for allowing them to take control over that over the Gaza. Exactly, so, you voted Hamas right. in as your government. There you go. So that's the bed you made. Now you got to sleep in it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you go in and kill a bunch of Israel Israelis, and then you take them prisoners. I mean, yeah, I'd be upset too. You know, yeah, I mean, it's going to be retaliation for that. I mean, a bunch of Georgia people came down to Florida and took a you know a bunch of prisoners and killed a bunch of Floridians. I'd be upset against Georgia. I'm going, you know. Yeah. We're going to go get them back. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, it's it's crazy. Uh, anyways, yeah, we're in a man, an upside down world today. It's it really is crazy and you know, I think we've always been in these upside down positions throughout time. It's just that with the media exposure and social media, it's in your face. You see it more. We hear about it quicker. Yeah, you hear. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> so, uh, again, I mean, social media hasn't, it's good and bad, you know, so good because you can get stuff instantly and but bad because there's a lot of things you really don't want instantly. <laughs> exactly. Yep, we hear about it as it's happening. You know, if something happens in California, you're hearing about it live right now. You know, you get a Twitter alert. This just happened five minutes ago. You know, back in the 80s, you wouldn't hear about it till the paper came out. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. You know, on, or, on Wednesday, you found out what happened yeah, I think when, last you know, week. You when know? President Kennedy was assassinated, we heard about it, what, you know, a week later? No. It was it was that same day. Yeah. But, again, but, it took time. Yep. It took a lot of time. But, hey, trust me, there's nothing coming out of California I want to hear about instantly. So you can just retract that one. <laughs> on a lighter note, we got Green Bay and San Francisco on Saturday. What's your pick? San Francisco, man. I'm kind of a I'm jumping on that Brock Purdy uh, I think bandwagon. San Francisco is gonna. Hey, man, Mister Irrelevant's going to go go the distance McCaffrey this year. Already to have 300 yards. Oh my gosh! I mean, what a what a stud that guy is. Yeah. I mean, good grief. Yeah. No, I'm going to have to go with uh, Green Bay on that one. And we got Kansas no, you just City switched the, teams. Are not Green Bay? I'm sorry. It's the, it's the bourbon talking people. And I'm <laughs> really must, going for San Francisco. That must I be apologize. Some good stuff. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm going for San Francisco on that one. Not Green Bay. But I got to admit, though, Jordan Love, man, he had a great game. You know, in the last playoff, he did. Yeah. He he did <clears> well. I mean, he's a, you know, he's been under uh, Aaron Rodgers for like three years. You know, he's just waiting, waiting, waiting patiently, and he's coming out lighting up the field, but. I got to go with Mr. Irrelevant here, you know, the seventh round, last pick in the draft, Brock Purdy. I mean, that guy's he's coming out doing good stuff. I yep. like him. He's on. And then you got uh, Kansas City and Buffalo coming up. And who's your pick on that one? I hate the Bills. And, you know, being friends with John, I've been forced to watch several Kansas City games this season, so – you know, I find myself from time to time excited when a, they make, yeah, I'm going for Kansas City. I just think it's going to be. Well, I can't go for Kansas City. <laughs> sorry, John. Never and all you Kansas City fans, I'm going for the Bills. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I'm not going to happen there. Yeah, uh, not a snowball chance in hell. I mean, and as much as I hate the, uh, 
the the Texans and and a few other teams. I think I don't know. Maybe it's the way that John just kind of pressures me on those Chiefs. His his passion for the Chiefs that oh you're talking about the annoying scream yeah, when they score a touchdown. Yeah, oh my yeah. God! So yeah, he's kind of gotten gotten the the whole. No, I'm not on that Chiefs bandwagon. I'll throw grenades at it. So, um, yeah. So, sorry, John, Deborah, but hey, got to uh, no, got to go for uh, Buffalo in that one. So we also got the Texans and the Ravens, and I can't stand either one of those yeah, teams. Yeah, the, the Ravens are going to slaughter the Texans. Uh, if I had to bet money, now this isn't who I want to win, but if I had to bet money, I'm betting on the Ravens. And let's go to the other NFC uh, game of the Buccaneers and the Lions. Yeah. Tampa's going to win that. Yeah, that'll be Tampa. Yep. Tampa, you got to go for the Florida team on that one. You know, I, you know what? A lot of kudos to the Lions, though. I mean, they've come a long way. They've actually got, you know, gosh, they haven't done anything since what? 50s? 60s? <laughs> I mean, the last time they were really relevant, I think, it was when. Um, uh, Barry Sanders played for, for the him. first year. Barry Sanders, yeah, was you know, and then after playoffs. that, it just, you know, yeah. So uh, again, I'm, yeah. So Buccaneers over the Lions. Hey, a lot, a lot of respect Lions. to the Lions, though. Uh, definitely the Bills over the Chiefs. Chiefs over the Bills. Yeah, see, we disagree. Uh, 40- I should do. I should do the banner down at our. I should do the banner down at the bottom of our picks. Yeah, yeah. you know, they do it like on ESPN. Yeah, and all yeah. That. yeah exactly. <laughs> you got you you to get our own. Yeah. That's copyright there. You, gotta, you better change that song. Change the tune. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Piece of shit. Piece of shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, yep, 49ers over to Packers. And, again, if I have to put money on it, uh, don't like either one of these teams, uh, Ravens over the Texans. I think uh, experience over youth on that one. And so that's our sports minute. This has been your latest sports update from (laughs) this Suburban Talker podcast. Yeah. And so we're back to uh, irrelevant bullshit stuff. Sorry. Um, And wow, this is in. Hey, news alert. Uh, Jim Harbaugh reported to reject Michigan's $69 million contract to join the NFL Giants. The Giants. Harbaugh's going to the Giants? The Giants. I did not see that I coming. did not see this that. This has been probably the biggest year in head coaching staff shakeups in the NFL that I can recall. Do you? I mean, how many is on the move? Well, you know, so I'm looking at the article here. And, and count Kirby Smart and Nick Saban in as well, because they're a big part of this. I mean, how many how many head coaches are so, out there doing this? So show? here, I got to retract my last comment because the headlines uh, contra- rejects to join the NFL Giants, but when you get into the article – it says he's going to the Chargers, so we have no idea where Jim Harbaugh is going, but he's not going back to Michigan. Sounds like somebody was just writing an article in the bathroom or something. Not sure. Yeah, that's um, like, yeah. So we'll keep you up to date on any breaking news. Here, and and I'm the- actually going <laughs> to screenshot this so you can actually add this yeah, to the good. thing. Yeah, it's screenshot like, it and shoot it over to you. It's anybody. like uh, join the Giants, but that is not what the article says. So he had a layover. In New York, when he was flying to go talk to another <laughs> team, is that what happened? Yeah, he was probably you know visiting his yeah. brother in Maryland, up by you know close yeah, to New York. They just saw like, him. In, they saw him in the airport, and they started writing articles. Yeah, what's oh, he's he going doing to the, here? Yeah, he's going to the Giants. Do you know who's on the flight right behind me? I'm sure he's on a <laughs> private plane, but anyway. But if you had to pick between the Giants and the Jets, I mean, which team would you go to? Jets. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that that would. That, and, and they team. both need a head coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they both need schedule head. both interviews on the same day. Exactly. But like, yeah. Can we just all three meet at the yeah. diner, you know? <laughs> meet me down at BJ's. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, and you thought that uh, 
Bill Belichick was going to go to the Cowboys, but they decided that uh, mm-hmm. McCarthy's going to stick around. So that ruled that out. And as we kind of predicted in, you know, before I read the headlines, we always thought that Harbaugh was going to the Chargers. And according to the article, it is not the headlines, Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, we always thought maybe Belichick would go there too. But it looks like Belichick may be going to Atlanta. So he was on um, Arthur Ashe's uh, mega yacht, you know, so I'm thinking he goes to Atlanta. So I think Kirby Smart sticking around Georgia. I mean, I really was hoping Kirby Smart would go to the Falcons. I really did. I want him out of the SEC. <laughs> He's him and Saban, if Saban gone, and then if Kirby Smart would go to the Falcons, that would uh, just really open up the door for the Gators to have a chance to do something. <laughs> but has Kirby Smart not heard my prediction? Is he is he doing everything to? <laughs> well, you, you know. Kirby may not have, on, Kirby. maybe maybe didn't hear it, but the University of Georgia did. And they're like, oh, no, we're going to give him a pay raise because of Billy's uh, comments come through. <laughs> I guarantee you that didn't happen. But if so, I need 10%. Just give me a little 10% cut. Hey, yeah, Kirby, I got you a pay raise, buddy. How about, uh, you know, <laughs> let me use your yacht and your private yacht, uh, airplane for a while and, you know, 10% of the loot. But anyways, yeah, so we had that. I guess we can go into our next our next uh, segment here on the podcast. Conspiracy time with Billy. <laughs> All right. Have I'm going to need a refill. <laughs> God, you... conspiracy with Billy. Yes. So this goes so, back. So I need like a little green man. To, you know, with this. You know, I, I, I got to get an alien now. Anyway, so. Uh, this actually doesn't have to do with UFOs. It has to do with. With. African American comedians. Oh wow! Oh, I know well, you I, did I not see that didn't one coming. See that one did coming. You? Hey, maybe I don't need the rest of that box. So, as you know, one of my favorite comedians is is Cat Williams, mm-hmm. and I'm a big Kevin Hart fan. I love Dave Chappelle, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. Man, I mean, I'm sorry. You know, it's no. I mean, they're all great, they great comedians. I enjoy them too. The best of the, ever. You know. So this this conspiracy starts back when Dave Chappelle, remember Dave Chappelle left and ran away from a $50 million contract, went to live in Africa, and people just thought he was doing was crack. It that, was that HBO or something like that? I can't remember. Anyway, it was right. Comedy Central gave, oh, okay. was giving him a $50 million contract. Okay. He comes back. He does a huge Oprah Winfrey uh, interview. Mm-hmm. And he kind of just breaks it down, and it's really weird. You know, he's he's like, there's just things that, you know, I, I wasn't running away from the money. I was running away from the consequences that come with the money, you know. And he starts talking about things that have happened to other comedians when they finally hit what he calls that next big plateau, mm-hmm. you know, when they really do their <laughs> big breakout. Right. And when you... Hindsight being 20, 20, 20 years ago, man, the things he is is saying is like, it really seems true. So one of his theories is, or he calls it a conspiracy, so I'll use his term, is that Hollywood will not let a black man hit that next big, huge level without them wearing a dress. I know it sounds super stupid, but it's like one of their, they call it the Illuminati that is controlling Hollywood and they will not let them really break out and make it big until they wear a dress. And I I know, please explain. I know. If you look back at every really big time movie star actor comedian black man they've all worn a dress okay i'm trying to i'm thinking every one of them i'm trying i don't remember richard Pryor, uh eddie murphy you're in the wrong deck you're in the wrong bump up a century i'm sorry you're like tracy morgan i don't remember him wearing a dress am i still in the wrong century no dude you name any black, I can tell you when they've had a dress on. 
if they've like truly made it, if they. Okay. Has Dave Chappelle worn one? No. <laughs> and that's where he says that he's been asked. And Kevin Hart? Like, nope. Yes. Well, okay. Where? Saturday Night Live. He was the new Pope, which was a black female girl. And Tracy Morgan? Out. Yes. I'm not a big Tracy Morgan fan. No, so I'm I not either, but I mean, he, he made it big. I mean, and I'm trying to go back to Tyler Perry. Yes. When did Tyler Perry wear a dress? Tyler Perry is Medina. He's been all his movies that he's ever made a damn dollar on. He plays a, a, a black woman. Wayman Brothers? Yes. Oh, yeah, White Chicks. And that White Chicks? Yeah. <laughs> Keep naming. I'm just, uh, no, I'm, I'm. It's literally like I thought that was the stupidest statement Cat Williams could ever make. Holy shit, dude. It's like every one of them. And so Kevin Hart gets on and says he gets interviewed right before Kevin Hart starts hitting all the movies. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's a comedian. He's doing pretty good. They they mentioned to him about the Chappelle statement that, you know, every man has to wear a dress. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, you have to have your boundaries and no one's asked me to wear a dress. But, you know, that's you got to realize you are your own brand and you don't want your brand tarnished. And literally months later on SNL, he comes out wearing a dress and he right after that gets cast in five movies and completely explodes. Now he's selling out stadiums. And so what about uh, Chris Rock and Chris Tucker? I don't remember them wearing. Or am I in the wrong decade again? Chris Tucker wore a dress in um, <clears throat> the Bruce Willis movie. Bruce what? The uh, last Boy Scout? No. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't. Six cent? I don't know. Man. Hang on. Trying to figure that one out. Uh, the Fifth Element. Don't remember him wearing. You a don't dress remember the. Oh, I remember the movie. But I just don't remember. Dude, he's wearing a dress and he's got big hair and uh, he's acting all flamboyant through the whole movie. Jamie Fox. Jamie Foxx is uh, La, Fond La, La Fonda. Like yeah, you're right. Every one of them, Jimmy. D.L. Hoogling. I don't even know who the fuck that is. <laughs> who? D.L. Hoogling? Hoogling. Mm -hmm. D. Hoogling. Something like that. Oh, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah, I, no, it, no, it's no, no. funny because I saw his face on a, another thing, and I was like, where'd that guy go? I haven't seen him in 20 years. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, what's he been doing? I, haven't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah. You know why you haven't heard from him in 20 years? He's dead. <laughs> Did he die? No. Oh. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> You know why you haven't heard from D.L. Hughley in, in 20 years? Why? He refused to put on the dress. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So I'm starting to think Cat Williams isn't crazy. Hmm. And a lot of other people are starting to think he's not crazy, too. I mean, I, again, you're going to say Arsenio Hall's last decade, but he did wear a dress, I remember. Yep. Tommy Davidson. I ha I'm looking them up so I can see their. F I, I apologize. I, I don't know everybody's name. So, Tommy Davidson. Is he a comedian or just? Yeah, name? he's a comedian. He was uh, original cast on In Living Color. Ah, he was one of the main main guys. So if he was on In Living Color, yeah, he he wore a dress. So they all wore dresses on In Living Color. The first thing I pull up on Tommy Davidson is a video from three years ago of why he explains wearing a dress is not something he wants to do. But and, did he? And now he's irrelevant. Now you don't hear. He probably stuck to his guns. Again, but I thought all those guys on In Living Color, uh, 
wore dresses. <laughs> so now, Dave, I mean, even Jim Carrey, who is white. <laughs> yeah. So Dave Chappelle tells this story. <clears throat> He's shooting a movie, right? He comes walking back into his trailer and he goes, oh, shit, I must be in the wrong trailer because there's a dress laying on the bed. Mm -hmm. And then the writer comes in behind him who he didn't know, just some writer. Hey, Dave, we got this really, really funny uh, thing. So what Dave Chappelle, uh, it, I'm sorry, Kevin Hart or whatever, or somebody's coming out of the out of prison and <laughs> it's, it's going to be so funny. And uh, they're actually going to smuggle you out as, as a as a prostitute you know it's gonna be funny so we got and dave's like i'm not wearing a dress that's not he says well all the all the big names ha have done it well if that's the case that means it's played out and i don't want to do it and so they give him all this pressure all this pressure they tell him come on dave you know every minute you're wasting here is costing us thousands of dollars and he finally says man i ain't putting on a damn dress i'm not doing it it takes off to Africa. So the writer leaves, comes back 10 minutes later with the whole scene re rewritten with him not in a dress. He's like, dude, how did you write the scene so damn fast? So it, they, know, had, he, they already had it written with they him already without. Had it yeah. Written. Yeah. yeah. It was already. And so I don't know, man. It's just. So that's the conspiracy. You can hit it in the big times. But and I just, make them millions of dollars, but there's one rite of passage. You have to wear you have to wear a dress. You know, and I'm I'm thinking about Richard Pryor. I, I don't remember seeing him dress. I bet he did. Um, because he played a lot of different characters. Uh you know, same with Eddie Murphy, you know, probably would not rule him out. I don't remember ever seeing him wearing a dress, but he wore a Spider Man costume. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh yeah. But, you know, Red Fox, I don't think that guy ever wore a dress. No way Red Fox wore a dress. And I can't think of uh, Steve Harvey wearing a dress. I mean, how can you be hanging with Mr. Cooper wearing a dress? It'd be Mrs. Cooper. Which one is this? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Yeah. In a dress. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, I tried people. I tried to uh, rule against this. And, and uh, when I say everyone, uh, I'm just saying, if you, his point is, if you want to really hit it big, and hit that next you, it's the hit it really big you, okay. you got and if you don't and you you refuse it you will wither away to nothingness you well know? this is a lot better and i can go with your conspiracy theory on this more than i can the little green men they're not green dude they're yeah. gray and some are translucent light beings that vibrated a different frequency. That's why you can't see them. Again, uh, I can go with this one probably a little more than your creatures from outer space. <laughs> All right, that's my conspiracy time today. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Do your own research. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please leave comments. All of them. All right. Let's just so... Very, very, very weird. With that, how much time have we done on this podcast? Uh, uh, we are in the second time. <laughs> I think there's like a hour, 40 minutes, ding, right on the knot, right, uh, right on the dot. One hour? 40 minutes. Oh, 40 minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, and congratulations to uh, the, uh, the, the Air Force fighter pilot who won uh, Miss America. Oh, yeah? Really? Yep. Yep. U.S. Air Force pilot uh, Madison Marsh was just crowned Miss America. She is a fighter pilot in the U.S. Air Force. So congratulations to her. I kind of like fighter pirate better. Fighter pirate. <laughs> Arr! <laughs> Get in my F-15. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, she gets in her little fighter pirate and carpet bombs Texas. Arr! No. Um, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Fighter pilot. 
Miss America, look at that. Where'd she have time to do that? And she out fighter doing fighter, fighter pilot pi- stuff. <laughs> Fighter pirate, Pi- stuff. fighter pirate shit, yeah. <laughs> like carpet bomb in Texas. Yeah. Um, no, that's pretty awesome. No, congratulations to her. And uh, with that, um, good grief. Um, you want to rate this bourbon, man? Let's uh, let's give her a rating again today, everybody. If you missed it at the beginning, we are drinking Blue Run today. Blue Run. Mm. And we're going to score this, and Billy's going to impress us with some math skills. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, that's funny. That's not that funny. <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm getting better, man. Math skills. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. You know that. Love you, brother. All right, I think you went first last time. Um, it was very, the very first sip before it got watered down was like, it was pretty, pretty powerful for me. Okay. Um, very oaky flavor. Pretty good. Um, but yeah, I've got to let that one rest a little bit. It it hit a little hard, but got better throughout the glass. Like right now, it's quite tasty. Well, I'm giving Blue Run a five. A five, a solid five. Yeah. All right. Well, hey. Well, I actually like the first flavor. I didn't find it that overpowerful. Powerful. Um, but it was it was good. It had good flavor all the way through. And, you know, the more and more, like you said, rest. It, yeah. it got better. But I'm going to give it a 6.5. 6.5. We moved the microphone. Sorry. Well, yeah, they're in my way. A five and a six point five is an average of five point seven five. Nailed it. Anyways, um, <laughs> all good. He's gonna check with the calculator. <laughs> oh gosh, they even make calculators anymore. Everybody just uses iPhones or smartphones. 5.75. He's good. He's good. I got him to second guess himself. Uh, you did, but that look <laughs> in your eye, I was like, come this, what I do? Uh, no, it's it's good stuff. I liked it. Um, but with that. No, I think we should comment that I'm batting a thousand in the 2024. In the month of January in 2024, you are batting 1,000. <laughs> Better than I can say for the Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> guys we sure hope you enjoyed this podcast we had a damn blast making it it's a lot of fun and uh hey 2024 we're looking for some uh, good stuff to happen so hang in there with us uh we're gonna get better we'll try can't promise but we'll try yeah if we go missing it's because we got damn busy with work which that's a good thing that's a good problem to have <laughs> so uh, with that billy it's a pleasure cheers till next time we'll see you we're out here out here